The OCD and Anxiety Podcast by Robert James Coaching. Hello and welcome to the OCD and Anxiety Podcast, where we explore how to have a more positive relationship with anxiety disorders taking back control so that you can start living the life you choose and not the one chosen by your fears. Hello and welcome to episode 415. I hope that wherever you are today in the world that you're doing very well and if you are those struggling with OCD or anxiety and you would like to get some support with what you're struggling with well you can by heading over to my website robertjamescoaching.com there you can book in for a free session or if you prefer you can send me a message and let me know about what you're struggling with. In today's podcast I'm going to be talking about What to do about the physical symptoms of anxiety that obviously so often come along with OCD? This is a really important area because when we can learn to deal with those physical sensations, uh, I think it makes dealing with uh, the OCD a lot, a lot easier. It's a a very uh, practical thing to, to be able to kind of develop these kinds of skills. If you find the podcast helpful, it would be great if you could follow and like on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Robert James Coaching UK. And also, most people who listen to the podcast are not actually subscribed. So if you wouldn't mind subscribing, I would very much appreciate that. So many thanks, guys. And if you have any questions, do please let me know. In relation to recognizing and easing the physical symptoms of anxiety, Harvard Health Publishing state that blame your autonomic autonomic nervous system. This is a system in your body that you don't consciously control, but that regulates things like your heart rate, breathing, urination, and sexual function. It's also the system that reacts when you're under a physical threat. The autonomic nervous system produces fight or flight response, which is designed to help you defend yourself or run away. And when we're under a lot of stress or anxiety, you know, it's this kind of fight or flight system that creates a lot of the difficult physical symptoms that that we experience with OCD and anxiety. Now, of course, if you are really struggling with OCD, you're also going to be struggling with anxiety. You know, when we're thinking about these kind of catastrophic thoughts, when we're getting caught up in the obsessions and then we're trying to kind of fix them, there's a huge amount of anxiety that we experience at the same time. And unfortunately, anxiety you know, because it's it's related to to the uh, the the kind of uh, sympathetic nervous system being being activated. When that happens, you know that the body releases stress hormones. We are, you know, we're in a more activated kind of state, and that leads to uh, physical symptoms of anxiety, which I'm sure you uh, have experienced a lot. You know, and some of these symptoms typically might might include headaches. Uh, nausea, shortness of breath, you know, you might even kind of get a kind of shakiness in the body or stomach pain. Some people even feel a sense of kind of disassociation when they're really struggling with, with OCD symptoms. And that's something that I experienced myself in the past. And so, you know, there's all sorts of different, different things that, that can kind of come up when we're really struggling with anxiety and, and, and OCD. Now, one of the main issues when it comes to physical symptoms of of anxiety is is our reaction to them. Obviously, we don't we don't like them, and we're trying to kind of get rid of them. We're we're looking for ways to to kind of push them away. At, you know, a lot of the time, that's the the kind of natural reaction. All of us, every single creature on this planet has that same kind of um uh, of response it's a it's a normal part of the nervous system that we want to move towards comfort and away from discomfort but unfortunately as you probably know if you listen to this podcast a lot 
what we try to kind of push away, what we try to uh, deny and just kind of force down, of course, it tends to come back stronger. And, you know, it, it kind of gets harder to deal with rather than being easier to deal with. And this is a big part of what kind of perpetuates OCD in, in the long term. You can almost think about a situation where you might be in a basketball gym. If you have a basketball and you happen to throw that basketball directly into the wall whilst you were stood right next to that wall, well, that basketball is going to come straight back at you. So it's probably not a very good idea that you, that you do that. It's going to lead to, to pain. And unfortunately, this is what we're doing with the physical symptoms of anxiety. We, you know, in, inadvertently, I mean, if it was so obvious as <laughs> the situation with the basketball in the gym, we wouldn't do it. But unfortunately, with, with anxiety, it, it's more subtle somehow, even though we may keep repeating the same mistakes and pushing it away and then making it worse. You know, we keep doing it because it, it keeps feeling like it's the right thing to do. It's the natural thing to do, to want to escape from the anxiety. But actually, you know, the it's it's the worst thing to do, despite the fact that it seems like the what we want to do, the the counterintuitive thing, the actual thing that we should be doing is trying to approach that feeling of anxiety, to be interested uh, interested in it and curious. Because when we can do that, that changes our relationship with it. We're no longer just fighting with it, pushing it away, getting angry and upset with it. We're actually trying to deal with it in a positive way. So how can you how can you do that because obviously when you are struggling with the obsessions and then the physical symptoms of anxiety are coming up and then you're struggling with those it's a really vicious kind of cycle that we get stuck in so how do we intervene there how do we kind of find a way to get ourselves kind of out of that trap because it really is a trap well i i think the the important thing first of all is that you need to kind of stop and pause. You need to actually just wait a moment and check in with yourself and your body to just really get a better um, understanding of what is actually going on. And that's, again, that's not the thing that we want to do. The thing that we want to do is just get rid of it. You know, we want to start, you know, almost like a game of whack-a-mole. We want to kind of like hit that mole in the head so so that it disappears. But we know with, with the uh, anxiety mole, all that really happens whenever we do that is another mole pops up and then another one and each time we hit we hit one you know another one will keep on appearing and they're very cheeky they're very annoying they kind of look at you as they pop back up as if to say you can't get rid of me try harder and so you do try harder because you know actually many people with OCD are very hard working and conscientious you know it's just that we're putting that hard work and effort into the wrong kind of things. Unfortunately, it doesn't matter how long you play whack-a-mole for, there's always going to be more moles that are going to come back up. And so we want to play a different game. And in order to do that, we just have to pause. We have to wait. We have to give ourselves an opportunity to check in with the body and check in with ourselves and to observe the fact that actually we're triggered, that we're in a sympathetic nervous response that that means that the body is releasing stress hormones and, you know, we have physical uh, symptoms of anxiety. You know, pay attention to an elevated heart rate if that's what you're experiencing. Try to pay attention to tension in the body, whether that's a headache or a stiff jaw, whether that's pain in the stomach, you're actually feeling a bit physically sick. Whatever the physical symptoms are for you, Another one could be uh, shoulders, you know, really paying attention to that. Whatever they are for you, the, the idea here is to just move your awareness to the parts of the body where you're experiencing that discomfort and pain and try to let go of judgment about it. Try to let go of overthinking and analyzing it because all of that thinking and judgment about the, the physical symptoms is actually just making it worse. If instead you can just stay with those feelings, with those uncomfortable sensations, 
Pay attention to them, uh, to them. Be interested to them. The message that you're sending to your subconscious when you do this is a very different one to when you're trying to get rid of them. Actually, what you're doing now is you're kind of saying, okay, well, these feelings are allowed to be here. I'm interested in them. I'm not scared of them. I'm curious about them. And when you do that, well, you know, your, your body tends to relax a bit more because you're not resisting so much and you're beginning this process of just allowing the discomfort to be there and the more that you're able to do that well the more that you you begin to turn this situation around and you know your body starts to come to kind of calm down the physical uh, symptoms calm down and you're not in so much of a sympathetic state anymore perhaps you've really been able to calm the situation down and after you've had that pause and you've paid attention, something else that, that you can do to, to add in here is actually just some deep and slow breathing. You know, I, I really like to focus on breath work sometimes as I'm a Wim Hof uh, instructor and somebody who really enjoys breath work and meditation and these things. I find that doing deep, slow breathing, even just 10 very deep, slow breaths, what it does is it slows the nervous system down and it gives you an opportunity uh, to get into a bit more of a, para, a parasympathetic state, which is the opposite of the uh, the fight or flight system. The parasympathetic system is the kind of rest and digest system. You know, the first step is always just pay attention though. Just notice what you're feeling. Don't do anything to try to change it and just stay with it and be curious. The second step could be, doesn't always have to be, but it can be this, you know, taking 10 deep breaths to just calm everything down. You know, so when you're doing this, what I'd like you to do is breathe, breathe. Oh, before we get into that, make sure if you are going to do this kind of thing that you're doing it in a safe place, never when driving or anything like that. But all you're going to do is you're going to take 10 very deep and slow breaths, breathing in through the nose as slow as possible down into the belly filling up the belly all the way up into the chest cavity and then breathing out through the mouth a nice long slow exhale and you're just going to repeat that 10 times and what you may find after doing that is that your thoughts are just a little bit slower that maybe you're still kind of a bit activated but it's not quite so intense as it was and it's a bit easier for you to then kind of refocus onto something else or to just let go of that obsession that you've been going around in circles with and that leads into uh, the final step that we're going to talk about today which is very much related to acceptance commitment therapy and that's really the idea of kind of positive distraction if you like it's this idea of, of okay what is it right now in this moment that is actually much more important than my fear and my my anxiety what is something that i can really focus my attention onto that i would like to do that's actually going to help me to come back into the present moment to get out of my head to allow those feelings to be there but, you know, it's something that will give you a chance to focus on something else. Valued activities here are very, very important. If you know what your values are, well, that, that gives you something interesting and important to refocus your attention onto. And when we do this, when we practice this ability that we all have to refocus our attention and just try to allow any discomfort to be there in the background, Often, you know, the anxiety and the physical symptoms begin to die down a little bit over time. So, you know, that can be a really important part of it too. Of course, if you're feeling, you know, a lot of physical anxiety, you know, it probably would also be a good idea to go and speak to a doctor or somebody about that as well. But yeah, those are some tips that that may be helpful for you in regards to, to how to deal with that physical anxiety a little bit better. So I really hope that you enjoyed that. If you have any questions at all about anything I've spoken about today, do please let me know and I will see you next time. Just a quick reminder that if you want to get a free session, all you need to do to get that is to head over to my website, www.robertjamescoaching.com. And there you can leave me a message and we can arrange the uh, free session. And now just a quick reminder of my disclaimer. 
any information that you view on my website, Instagram page, Facebook group, or anywhere else online, or any information that you listen to on the podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be a substitute for actual medical or mental health advice from a doctor, psychologist, or any other medical or mental health professional.